In the shrinking global marketplace, savvy anglers can buy unbranded fishing gear direct from the Far East and save themselves a fortune, right? Hello, I'm Tom from carpfeed.com and this is a video we've been wanting to make for a while. When the much anticipated Nash scope reels were released last year, we began to see the same few comments on social media. You probably saw them yourselves. In any discussion of these new reels, a few commentators would confidently assert that Nash had just stuck a logo on a Chinese design that could be picked up for a fraction of the cost on eBay or AliExpress. That cheaper reel was the Cast King Mailer 2, and it certainly looked like the Nash reel, but was it identical? Had crafty anglers uncovered a money-making conspiracy from Nash? The only way to find out was to buy one and compare it to its pricey arrival. Before we continue, I'd like to point out that this video is not sponsored by Nash or Cast King, eBay or AliExpress for that matter. Nash does not currently advertise with Carp Feed, though they have been kind enough to send us a pair of scope reels for this video, and they've told us we can do what we like with them. So here is what you're presented with when you order a Nash Scope GT4000 reel, RRP 164.99, and a Cast King Mailer 2 4000, 29.99 on eBay. As you open up the Cast King box, you're greeted by the reel with that distinctive honeycomb spool and a separate spare spool, which is just plasticky and very light. But first impressions of the reel itself are good. It looks neat and compact. The handle is metal and nicely polished. The body looks a little cheaper. The way the Mailer 2 logo is imprinted looks a little smeared, but it all feels solid and well built. Due to the honeycombing on the spool, all the details are printed on the top. And again, the printing isn't exactly top notch, but obviously you don't buy a reel for the way the logos are presented, but it might just hint at cost cutting elsewhere in the construction. Anyway, the print says this reel holds 130 yards of 12 pound line or just 90 yards of 20 pound line. That's not a big capacity. And this 4000 model was the biggest mailer two we could find online. It also says it has a gear ratio of 5.2 to one. That means for every one complete turn of the handle, the spool rotates 5.2 times. Now, perhaps most surprisingly, beneath the spool, there is a logo stating that this reel contains 10 plus one ball bearings. The plus one will be the one in the line roller as it is on all reels, but that still leaves 10 to fit inside this pretty tiny frame. We will attempt to open it up and have a look inside later on. A lot of anglers are seduced by the ball bearing number. It stands to reason that more bearings should equal a smoother, more refined reel, but that's just not the case. It's all about the quality of the ball bearings. Some of the Shimano bait runners, which are still available now, only have a single ball bearing, so it's about quality, not quantity. Anyway, this little nailer too feels pretty decent in the hand, although it's a tad noisy. The handle is certainly very comfortable, with a foam knob slightly indented by the Cast King logo. We'll delve deeper into that one a little bit later, but for now, let's take a look at what you get in the Nash box. So what do you get for an extra 130 odd quid? Well, you get a little velvet effect bag that you'll never use, and instantly the reel feels weightier and more solid. Despite also being labelled as a 4,000 size reel, the scope is also bigger. Reel sizes, much like clothes sizes, really are down to the manufacturer's interpretation of what is or isn't a 5,000 reel or a small or an extra large. There are clearly design similarities between this and the casking, such as the three-legged base where the handle mounts to the body, the cutout window on the stem, the sweep of the handle, and of course that distinctive honeycomb spool. But if you look closely, you'll notice the dimensions are often different, so these haven't come from the same moulds. And in any case, the quality of the casting, and by that I mean the way it's come out of the mould, seems more defined on the Nash version. There's a lot more metal on the Nash body compared to the more plasticky Cast King, but they both have a similar number of ball bearings. In the Nash one, it's nine internally and one in the bail arm roller. The Nash version wins the capacity battle too, with an ability to take 290 yards of 0.28 line, which is roughly 12 pound line. That's more than double what the Cast King can swallow. The drag on the Nash version also feels more defined and just a class above. One thing you don't get here, which you do with the Cast King, is a spare spool, but as I've said, the Cast King spare is a very flimsy plastic affair without the honeycombing. So with both reels in hand, even a novice angler will be able to tell which is the more expensive. And with 130 odd quid between them, that's exactly what you'd expect. But let's spool them up, take them fishing, and see how they perform on the bank. 
So I took the reels to Barston for a day session here in the West Midlands. We weren't quite able to get in the pegs where all the fish are clearly holding, but I've caught a couple of carp and I've really been able to give these reels a thorough going over. You learn so much about a reel when you use it on the bank compared to just playing with it in your hands in a tackle shop. And I've learned a great deal about both the Cast King and the Nash reels. We caught a couple of carp, but we've done a lot of casting, a lot of cranking, and the uh, findings are pretty clear. I'll share those once I'm back indoors and dry and warm. I've also been able to look under the lid of both reels. We got the screwdriver out and took them apart. So I'll share that just as soon as I've got this fish back. Well, I'm back home after a bit of a battering in the teeth of a gale at Barston and it's time to reflect on these two reels. I fully acknowledge that a day at a commercial fishery catching pretty small fish isn't like running both of these reels for a season of abuse. But it was a busy day, casting every 20 or 30 minutes or so to locate the fish, so I definitely got a good feel for both products. I fished two rods, one with the Nash reel and one with the Cast King, and they were both 10 foot, 3 pound rods in an attempt to balance the setup with these fairly small reels. In fact, one of the first things that became apparent was just how small the Cast King is. As I said earlier, the 4,000 size was the largest we could find online, and in reality, it's more like a feeder reel than an out-and-out -out carp reel. That slight undergunned feel is most keenly felt in the handle, which when I unboxed the Cast King looked well designed and comfortable. On the bank, however, it was just too small. Reeling in felt like I was pinching at it. I couldn't get a proper grip on the small foam knob at the end of the handle. The scope reel is also badged as a 4000 size and there is a larger 6000 version available too, but it has much more of a presence in a fishing situation and the handle was like a good football referee, you just didn't notice it throughout the day. I fished off a barrow at Barston and tried coming short and going long with small PVA bags to find the fish. The longest spot I fished on the day was just under 84 yards into a headwind, which no isn't a massive cast at all and I don't claim to be a big caster, but it did give both reels a decent test. Both of them could reach that distance with a 10 inch rig and a mesh bag, but it was more of a struggle for the cast king. The line lay on the Cast King was pretty poor to begin with, settling in into an exaggerated taper and got pretty ragged as the day wore on. As I said at the time of the unboxing, the stated line capacity is poor, but I actually managed to get 190 yards of 12 pound line onto it, which is 60 more yards than stated. Had I overfilled it perhaps? Well, the line lay was so tapered, it's really hard to tell, but I didn't get any of the problems you normally associate with overspill when casting. The line clip on the Cast King is immediately something that worried me when I set up on the bank. Out of the cosy environment of the studio, it suddenly looked a bit sharp and unforgiving, but it didn't damage the line like I thought it might, though I would be cautious of repeatedly smashing the clip for prolonged periods of time. Another thing I experienced with the Cast King was slippage of the spool during big casts. A couple of times, I hadn't tightened down the front drag as tightly as I thought I had, and I heard and felt the spool Slip during the cast. Really cranking down the drag solved this problem, but it did catch me out more than once and it's not something you associate with a quality reel. The Cast King's smaller dimensions and much smaller spool also had an impact on retrieve rates. I don't have the exact figures to hand here, but cranking in the mailer from 80 yards plus felt much more of a chore than doing the same with the Nash. The Nash reel behaved as it should. It felt more solid in the hand, there was no twisting and talking in its body, and the line lay was genuinely impeccable. And that's obviously what you would expect from a much more expensive reel, but it did have an air of class about it, and I can't lie, it looked damn cool on a 10 foot rod setup. So what about under the hood? How do these two compare when I prized them open? We'd seen a couple of comments about these two reels online saying, as soon as you open up, that's when you'll see the differences. And yep, to an extent, we did. But I'll be completely honest here, it wasn't as night and day as I perhaps expected. Getting into the Nash reel was trickier and the whole construction instantly struck me as better made. The Cast King undressed itself without much fuss and some of the fit and finish of components was noticeably cheaper. Internally, however, we found solid metal gearing and brass pinions in both. I was expecting the internal differences to be much more striking, and perhaps to an, an eye more trained than mine, they are, so do feel free to leave your observations in the comments section. Of course, it's hard to assess the quality of the metal used at this stage because we've opened them both up very early into their lives, and the picture may be very different after a season of abuse. We also weighed both reels, which might hint further at all-round quality. 
Lightness, I guess, is both a gift and a curse in fishing reels, so I'll leave you to draw your own conclusions based on weight alone. So look, the Nash reel clearly outshone the Cast King on the bank, and it feels better built and more solid, but that doesn't necessarily make the cheaper option a terrible reel. As I said earlier, it's more of a feeder reel or even a lure reel than it is an out and out carp reel. It's been caught up in a battle with the Nash option simply because of the way it looks, rather than its intended use or performance. Judged on its own merits, it's not a terrible reel for the price, and this is under 30 quid, remember. I'd happily use this on my lure fishing setup or as a spare on a stalking rod. There are plenty of videos on YouTube where people buy actual knockoff versions of items like drones, games consoles and cameras from websites like Wish. They invariably end up with laughably bad counterfeits. That is absolutely not the case here. The Cast King is a usable fishing reel at an affordable price. I'm completely confident you could use it for smaller species for many years. However, it just cannot hold a candle to the Nash Scope GT in the carp arena, and we can categorically put to bed any rumours that the Nash version is just a rebadged cast king with an inflated price tag. The scope is a proper specialist tool, much more capable of being used for the biggest of carp. Anyone who's seen the footage of Alan Blair playing monsters in Thailand on scopes or tried their hand on the new Nash fishing simulators that have been doing the rounds at shows will be well aware of that. It's expensive, yes, but good kit generally is. We hope you enjoyed this video, it's certainly been a fun one to make, pitting these two reels against each other. For more varied content from the Cartfeed team, please hit that subscribe button.